Hey guys, Pierre here from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another fly tying tutorial. In the vice here I've got a fly called the Tabanas, a fly that I recently discovered and one of its greatest attributes is its wonderful profile and the fact that it flows like a cork, which makes it ideal to be used in dry dropper rigs. This fly tying tutorial is brought to you by Moonshine Rods Company. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check the links in the video description below to see my full hands-on look at their Epiphany 3 weight 10 foot 6 inch Neuro Nymphing Rod. Coming in at around $280 including an extra tip section. I think this is one of the best value Euro Nymphing Rods on the market today. The tools you need to tie the tub and ice is a vise. A rotary vise helps especially when wrapping the CDC underbody. A bobbin rest for your vise if you're using the rotary function a bobbin holder, whip finishing tool, a pair of scissors, long and short, and a Marc Petit Jean clip and magic tool. We'll start off by securing the hook in the vise. Right here I've got a barbless dry fly hook in a size 14. Attach the thread about one quarter of the hook shank behind the eye. Right here I've got Griffith Shear 14 over in color olive. I then lay a thread foundation in the forward direction and keep opening my thread just to reduce bulk. Please keep in mind to keep a small gap behind the eye of the hook for the head when we finish the fly. Now transfer the thread to about one quarter of the hook shank or one fifth of the hook shank behind the eye. Now tie in a piece of poly yarn on top of the hook shank where you left the thread about one fifth of the hook shank behind the eye. I use green especially when it gets dark, I like using green or fluorescent orange. Now pull the yarn to the sides perpendicular with the hook shank and make a couple of figure eight wraps between the fibers just to splay open the poly yarn. You'll end up with something like that. Now pull the poly yarn up and then we're going to start creating the post. What I do is I hold the poly yarn in my tying hand and I pass the bobbin around the base of the post a couple of times. Right, bring the thread back to the base of the post, right there. Open the thread by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise, this helps to reduce the bulk. Now I'll wrap the thread with touching turns in a rearward direction and I'll open the thread one, one more time on the way there. When you reach the bend of the hook, just stop the thread base. I turn the CDC feather between my fingers to trap and spin all the fibers around the stem. I'm going to tie in the tip with the thread. What I do is I wrap around three times. One, two, three. And then I push the bobbin slightly towards the hook shank just to relieve some of the tension. I then pull the CDC feather backwards so that we can just grip the tip of the feather just like that. Now we wrap all the way forward. Here you make a half hitch just behind the post. Now you just rest the thread and your bobbin over a bobbin holder. What this allows us to do is use the rotary function of the vise without the thread coming under. Now you can grip the CDC feather with a hackle plier if you want to or I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm going to turn the CDC around the body with touching turns. Move forward and every now and then just turn the CDC, CDC feather in your hand. And then you leave a small gap 
between the post and the rear end of the abdomen. Secure the CDC with your thread just to lock it in place. Remove your bobbin rest and cut off the excess feather. Now we're going to trim these long fibers from the abdomen which leaves just a buggy looking abdomen. Right, now you've got the abdomen done. Now it's time to prepare the underwing. I removed two long CDC feathers from the packet and stroke them so that the fibers are perpendicular to the stem. I lay both feathers on a table clamp and while gripping both sides of the feathers, I push down so that the feathers go into the table clamp, folding over both sides of the fibers of the feathers. I then trim off the excess on both sides and slide a paper clamp over these fibers to transfer them to the paper clamp. With a long pair of scissors, cut off the stem so that we're just left with the aligned CDC fibers. Now take your Marc Pedijan magic tool and slide the blade between the paper clamp to compress all the fibers. Open the paper clamp and transfer the compressed CDC fibers between your index finger and thumb. Trim the butt ends of the fibers so that they all align and lay them on top of the hook shank. Wrap the thread around the CDC fibers, trapping just the tips and secure them with a couple more wraps. Now that the CDC is tied in, it's time to prepare the overwing. The overwing is made from deer hair or elk hair. Right here I've got a hen's deer hair patch in color code 05. I cut a small section from the skin to form the other wing. Once you've cut the fibers from the skin, grab the tips in your non-tying hand and pull on the butt ends to remove any loose and short fibers and also to comb out all the um, theft. Now transfer these hair fibers into a hair stacking tool with the tips going in first to align the tips. Tap the hair stacking tool against the hard surface just to align the tips and once you're ready, split the hair stacking tool to reveal the aligned tips. This step is very much similar to a CDC and elk or elk hair caddis. Now it's time to measure the overwing. We want the overwing to extend just beyond the bend of the hook. Now transfer the aligned tips to your non-tying hand and hold it in place and just cut the fibers just longer than the tying in point. Hold the hair fibers on top of the hook shank and make two wraps around it just just grabbing them with a thread. Pull down just to secure them and then make a couple more wraps to secure them in place. Transfer the thread in front of the post as this is where we'll tie in the hackle. The hackle that I'm using is from a Grizzly neck cape from Whiting. This is grade bronze. Just remove any fibers from the base or the soft and off colored fibers. Trim off the stem so that you're just left with that. Now, hold the feather against the post in an upright position and secure the feather at the base of the post with your tying thread. Now, grip the post and the feather together and run the thread up against the post again just to secure the feather to the post up to the point where you stop the post right there. If you've accidentally trapped one of these fibers of, of the overwing, just pluck them out. <sighs> Cut off the excess stem at the bottom. Now transfer the thread back to the base of the post where we'll start dubbing the thorax. For the thorax, I'm using hairline, super fine dry fly dubbing, and I'm using the color brown. So just create a nice slender dubbing noodle twisting in the opposite directions with both your finger, um, both your hands. Pull back the post and the feather and just create one or two thorax wraps in front of that. Just splay, split all these fibers back, fold all these overwing fibers back, 
just create a thorax in front of the other wing but before the post. Just come forward again and transfer the thread back to the post. One tip that I can give you here is that you'll see that if you wrap the hackle around the post now, it'll grab or grip some of these other wing fibers. So all that I do is very loosely lay a thread wrap over these, over the other wing, which keeps it out of place. Just grab all the fibers there. Just like that. Now I've got a little bit more space to work with. So all we do now is just wrap the hackle. Very much similar like a parachute atoms. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit. You can just see. And once you reach the base of the post, release that thread wrap while keeping tension on the feather. That thread wrap that you put over the wing and just secure the hackle in place. Just wiggle your thread around just to make sure that you don't trap any fibers. Do about three wraps, that's more than enough. Grab a pair of scissors. Trim off the excess. Transfer your thread to just behind the eye of, eye of the hook. And this is where we're just going to create a little head for the fly. And with your whip finishing tool, just do a nice neat three or four turn whip finish. Pull on the thread to lock, lock the knot in place. 